Hello everyone and welcome back to the Silicon Nubian YouTube channel where we do all things tech. Very recently I was asked a few questions by someone who is a strict Windows user as to why I have chosen Linux as the operating system of choice on my main workstation, the workhorse daily driver PC in my office. Second question was Given all the quality distributions that exist, why did I choose Manjaro and why do I stick with Manjaro? Well, in this video, I hope to explain sufficiently well why I've done that. While I poke around a fresh install of Manjaro uh, 16.10. There are a number of criteria <clears throat> that I use when choosing an operating system or I should say Linux distribution uh, when it came to my main desktop. The first thing I looked at was stability. Being that it is my main desktop, I didn't want any issues with respect to uh, frequent crashes, uh, problems installing hardware, and just getting up and running uh, quickly without having to worry about the system itself getting in the way. Well, Manjaro suits that bill. Some may say that Manjaro, being based on Arch Linux, uh, I must point out that there are differences with Manjaro and Arch with respect to tweaks in the kernel and some packages that have been tweaked that are available in Manjaro uh, exclusively, uh, what I'm told. Uh, Manjaro has proven itself to be an extremely stable system. I have had I believe one incident which I can remember in two years where Cinnamon refused to boot up and that was an issue with one file uh, a mistake with the maintainers which was fixed within I think 24 or 48 hours and to boot up I just went into XFCE instead lesson here always have one more than one graphical user interface and interface installed um, I like to use XFCE and Cinnamon and that's about it Rolling release. Yes, Manjaro does use the rolling release uh, way of doing things. Install once and just keep updating it. Uh, many would say that this lends itself to instability. I have found otherwise. I have not found any uh, thing negative about it. In fact, I have grown to be quite fond of this type of um, distribution where I don't have to worry about doing upgrades every six months if I want to or not. I just enjoy uh, the fact that I'm running cutting-edge software with cutting-edge kernel and I'll get into some of that a little bit later. So stability, Manjaro has proven itself to be as stable as any of the other distributions that I've used long-term and I've used quite a few. Secondly, out-of-box experience. I've used Arch. I've I started using Linux way back in Slackware 5. Point, I can't remember. Um, experimenting with Mandrake Linux. Um, probably the other distribution that I've used for extended period of time have been PC Linux OS, Linux Mint, and I believe OpenSUSE or SUSE at the time. And the out of box experience is very important for me. It doesn't mean that a distribution has to come with a million different applications installed but what a distribution has to have that I appreciate is for me to become productive very quickly after installation and Manjaro allows me to do that I also have used pure Arch Linux and that's not something you could say about Arch it's not a negative thing about Arch Arch has their way, the Arch way of doing things. And if you adhere to that way, you will be very satisfied with a beautifully uh, well-running system, very high performance. You know exactly everything that went into it because you were responsible for everything that went into it. Manjaro basically takes that base, tweaks it a bit, and makes it release ready, meaning, in my words, meaning your out-of-box experience from the get-go. For example, this is a quick installation of 16.10. You see that we have Office software, LibreOffice installed, development tools, educational. We have accessories, all these things that you would have to install mostly from scratch, not all of them. If you do install, let's say, XFCE 
or um, any other graphical user interface. It comes with a lot of other tools. But just from the get-go, Manjaro has a very, what I would call, um, well-thought-out selection of quality software. So the out-of-box experience from Manjaro, given all of its other pluses, as I've mentioned, with respect to, you know, rolling release, uh, performance, it has all of that. And uh, quickly after installation, you become you can become very um, productive without having to dig deep into the system. But it's there if you want it. Next would be support and community. This is another place that Manjaro really shines. Uh, really, really shines. Uh, with support and community, Manjaro, uh, the online community is very very helpful they are there to help you with no problem at all you have absolutely great support a quick turnaround for questions and whatnot and this is very important this is not to say that other distributions do not have this just that Manjaro does have this and uh, being based on Arch you can also go to the Arch community and a lot of the questions or issues that are answered, if if they do arise, if they um, arise for Arch, uh, they can be taken uh, right back to Manjaro, and uh, the fixes or the help can be used in Manjaro as well, being that it's based primarily on Arch Linux. Fourthly, software availability. This is where I think Arch and Manjaro really shine. I'm going to show you when you want to add software there are the regular repositories but you can also enable the AUR the AUR um, is an acronym for Arch user repository and these are packages that are supplied by users and other organizations uh, to be compatible and run on Arch based distributions Arch in particular <clears throat> but by definition it will run on Manjaro I have used the AUR, not extensively, but I did use the AUR to get my older Epson printer working without much issues at all. My brother printer, much easier through the AUR to find the proper driver for my printer. I'll show you. If I do a search here, but in, it's not available in the regular repositories, but as you can see, the driver is readily available in the AUR. Now, I could have gone straight to the Brother site and got the driver and jumped through hoops to get it installed, but just one click here, install, and my Brother printer was working. Uh, I did have to tweak one or two little things, but a quick look at one or two forums, and it did connect to my Brother printer, which is strictly a network printer. All in all, uh, I'd have to say less than five minutes of work to get it working. But then again, I've used Arch and Manjaro before, so to me it was uh, quite easy. Software availability. There are some packages uh, that I found on Manjaro slash Arch that I can't find on other distributions because of the AUR or even in the regular repositories. Ubuntu probably has as much packages available and support in the community and outside the community. So I'll give it that, but I prefer the rolling release and more cutting edge features and software that are available in Manjaro. Extras. Rolling release. As I mentioned before, Manjaro is a rolling release model, uses a rolling release model, which means that install once, just perform regular updates, and you'll always be sure of running the latest version of the system. What Manjaro does is occasionally they'll release a new ISO with all the updated uh, software for that date. For example, uh, this is version 16.10, which means it's the October release, and I can't remember the week, .10.3 or .10, I can't remember exactly the date, .6. That's how Manjaro is, uh, the versions are done with the first number being the actual release version, the second one being the month, and so on and so on. So you just go and get the latest ISO, install that, 
uh, you'll have tons of updates to do, I'm sure. And even a year later, if you've done your updates religiously, uh, you don't have to do them every day, but don't wait three, four months to do updates. That's another thing I got to tell you with these rolling releases, because there's a lot of things that change over time. Not necessarily with your user experience, but um, I'll go down here and you'll see what I mean. There are updates that are available already. If you keep it updated, for example, I usually go once a week or so, maybe even once every few days. And you'll see all the plugins are available here ready for updating. Then you're pretty assured of running a solid system. And you'll be as up to date as anybody else who's ha who has a Manjaro installed, which is a positive thing, of course. Also, next to that is the AUR, the Arch User Repository. I've went into that already, where user supplied software and packages from uh, outside maintainers who are outside the core can, uh, maintainers of the OS. Um, again, some people may say that this is inviting instability into the system. I don't use the R, AUR for everything, but what I've used it for, for example, printer drivers. Uh, I like a particular YouTube downloader as well that is available in AUR and a few other things. Uh, maybe I, a small handful of software I use in the AUR and I find it to be indispensable. Performance. This is where Manjaro and the Arch-based distributions have it in spades. Very tight, very quick. Um, if you're a performance junkie, this is the distribution for you. Really, it's, it's in, incredibly quick. On my main machine, which I will link in the description for this video that I built, when I first built it to show it working, I initially installed, I believe it was Linux Mint, quickly went over to Manjaro, and have been very happy. Recently, uh, I've tried a handful of other distributions, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, ease of fixing issues. Whether you're on OS X, Windows 10, uh, various distributions of Linux, there's going to be times potentially, potentially that you may run into one or two little issues especially if you're a power user such as myself and other people. Well, how quickly can you get over those issues? Once again, Manjaro has an excellent base. They have a fantastic forum. You could also use the Arch forum as well, and it would count for Manjaro uh, equally as well. And issues are found, discovered, discussed, and fixed pretty quickly, uh, if you find any. For example, in the issue I had with the Cinnamon booting, um, the first thing is discovery. I need to know what the problem is. Other people hopefully have the same problem because then I know it's not just me. And there are, after that, dozens of people who reported on it and a fix is, is done pretty quickly. So those are the main reasons that I've used Manjaro. I just love the deceptive simplicity of the system we'll call it it's, it seems very simple but under the hood it's not it's 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 not complex uh, but it's 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 wonderful it's just a wonderful wonderfully put together distribution um, recently and I'll end with this recently I said to myself let me image my Manjaro drive and try a handful of distributions well I went through MX Linux which I've done a re review about um, went through antics. I said, let me get something. I'm a performance junkie. So I tried these performance, initially at least, these uh, performance-based distributions. Then I went to OpenSUSE 42.2, I believe it was, the latest one. I went to Mint. I went to SolidXK, the SolidX version, the XFCE, which I really like quite a lot. And I have a dual monitor set up with a AMD A10-7850 APU. <laughs> this setup kind of confused a few distributions. One, I can't remember exactly which one, but um, said right out that uh, they don't support AMD uh, drivers at all. I can't remember which one. Well, there is the open source one, which works fine. I have a dual monitor set up as well, and believe it or not, 
Only OpenSUSE and Manjaro actually configured the monitors the way I like them right out of the box, which I thought was a big plus. In some distributions, it's quite a headache to get that done. Um, the dual screen, just the way I like it. Uh, going through all these distributions, uh, there's a few more that I tried as well. Some obscure ones. I tried Deepin, Linux. I tried, oh, a couple. Through the space of about a week to two weeks, I really gave each distribution a few days on the machine to see, could that unseat Lanjaro? Because one of the most popular things to do in the Linux world, it seems, sometimes is to distribution hop. And I said, I'm with this for a while. Let me see if I can find something that would make me switch. Well, at the end of the day, I got to tell you I'm back on Lanjaro. Why? No, I maybe it's because of the last two years I've spent working with Manjaro, and I'm quite used to how it works. But when I thought about it better, and I sat down, and I did give each distribution at least, I think the minimum I gave each distribution was at least two days on my machine. Some of them was closer to three to four days. It was over a two a two week period. I just came back to Manjaro because Manjaro really does what I want it to do. It looks the way I want it to look. It does what I want it to do. It's predictable, but I guess that comes from familiarity. And it works fantastically. I would tell anyone who has a moderate amount of computer experience, in particular Linux and higher, to give Manjaro a try. Even if you are fairly new to Linux, give Manjaro a try. It's a wonderful distribution. I've tried my best to get away from it, not because I hate it or I don't appreciate or got tired of it, but I just wanted to see if something else out there is better. I, all these distributions, for example, Solid XK, uh, Linux Mint, uh, MX Linux, highly recommended. Okay, the Ubuntu and their deriv derivatives as well, very highly recommended. But for me and what I've done and what I expect out of a Linux distribution, Manjaro Linux just puts all the check marks in all the boxes. And that comes down to why I use it. So just wanted to put this little video out there. If you like what I'm doing here, please comment. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you later with more videos. Take care.